This is the Tridan Vertical Coil Expander. In this video, we will cover the operation of the Tridan Vertical Coil Expander in manual mode and automatic mode. We will also provide instructions on a complete tooling change, setup, and maintenance. First, we'll look at the operator console. All operating functions can be performed from this panel. To operate the expander, first, press the motor start button. This starts the hydraulic power unit and supplies power to the control circuits. Next, check the manual auto switch. In manual mode, you must depress and hold both run buttons for the ram to move down. The run buttons are configured for anti-tie down. Therefore, you must push both buttons simultaneously. If you release either run button while in manual mode, the ram will stop. While in automatic mode, Press both buttons and hold them until the auto cycle circuit is engaged. This happens when the auto cycle actuator engages the auto cycle limit switch. At this point, the expander is in automatic mode. The ram cylinder also goes into regenerative mode. This will cause the ram speed to increase. The ram continues down until the ram engages the ram down limit switch. The ram will then reverse directions and move upward. The ram will continue upward until the ram up actuator disengages the ram up limit switch. If a power lift gate is used, it will lower at this point. Next, we'll do a complete tooling change. When performing a complete tooling change, relieve air pressure from the machine. The air cushions will disengage and the air cushion cylinders will come to rest in the down position. Using the tool provided, a bent screwdriver, Remove the nest blocks by gently prying upward from the bottom. Remove the swing gates. The swing gates on this expander are removed by lifting the gate and pulling forward. This expander has four gates. Your particular expander may differ slightly. Repeat this for all of the swing gates. Remove the strippers. Using the bent screwdriver provided in the tool kit, Insert the screwdriver against the flat spot on the stripper. Pry up on the stripper plate, but be careful not to pry against any of the holes in the stripper plate. Next, remove the two bolts and alignment pin from the nest block retainer plate. Rotate the plate away from the machine. The plate is designed so that the rods can be removed from floor level. It is not recommended that the operator climbs onto the machine to access the rods. Lower the ram until the rods are accessible from floor level. Do this by first pressing motor start on the control panel. Next, make sure the manual automatic switch is in the manual position. Press both run buttons simultaneously. Hold the buttons until the rods are in the proper position. Press motor stop on the control panel. Removing the rods. Grasp a rod and twist it 180 degrees, then pull straight down. Guide the rod straight down into the cavity below the nest plate retainer. When removing rods, do not let the tips hit the machine or the floor, since damage to the rods may occur. If more space is needed, you may remove rods in small groups. Once a group of rods are pulled down, you can raise the ram and remove the rods from the expander. Do this by first pressing the motor start button. Again, make sure it is in the manual mode. Press the ram up button until the ends of the rods are exposed. Remove the loose rods. Lower the ram and repeat the process until all rods have been removed from the machine. Removing the final pushers. Using special radius clamp head pliers supplied by Tridan, grasp the final pusher. Rotate it 180 degrees and pull straight down. It is important to note that on some expanders, the final and the final pushers are one piece. However, on this machine, we have a two-piece final consisting of the final pusher and the final tooling, which slides onto the expander rod. Removing the stripper plate. Remove all but the two center bolts. Support the plate with a forklift or other lifting device. Remove the two center bolts. Lower the lifting device and remove the stripper plate from the machine. Remove
removing the final pusher plate. Remove all but the two center bolts. Support the plate with a forklift or other lifting device. Remove the two center bolts. Lower the lifting device. Removing the rod guide plates. Always keep safety in mind and wear a safety belt when working above floor level. Make sure the rod guide carrier plate is properly suspended before removing the rod guide plates. Remove all bolts from the rod guide plate. The plate can then be removed from the machine. Repeat the process for all other guide plates. Although there are six on this machine, your machine may differ. Removing the rod lock plate. Lower the ram. Do this by first pressing the motor start button on the console. Check to assure the manual automatic switch is in the manual mode. Press and hold both run buttons until the ram stops. Remove all but the two center bolts. Support the rod lock plate with a forklift or other lifting device. Remove the two remaining bolts. Remove the plate from the machine. Leave the two dowel pins in the plate. This concludes removing the tooling from the expander. Now, we will install a new set of tooling. Installing the rod lock plate. Support the plate with a forklift. Align the two dowel pins with the alignment holes. Use a small mallet to align the plate to the holes. Tap the dowel pins flush with the rod lock plate and install several bolts. Move the forklift away. Continue installing the remaining bolts. Installing the rod guide plates. Align the plate on the dowel pins. Install the bolts. Only one is shown here. Again, the number of rod guide plates will vary depending on your expander. Installing the final pusher plate. Move the final pusher plate into position with a forklift. Align the dowel pins to the alignment holes. Install several bolts and tighten. Move the forklift away and install the remaining bolts. Installing the stripper plate. Move the plate into position with a forklift. Align the dowel pins with the alignment holes and install several bolts. Move the forklift away and install the remaining bolts. Installing the nest plate. Place the nest plate on the nest block retainer plate. Align with the two dowel pins. Install the bolts and tighten. Installing the final pushers. The final pushers have a notch on them. When installing, make sure the notch is correctly oriented. On this expander, we install the pushers with a notch toward the front of the machine. Depending on your tooling set, this may be different for your machine. Installing the finals. The final simply slides on the expander rod. To change finals, slide the final off the rod. Replace it with the final for the new tooling set. Do not allow the finals to strike the ball on the end of the rod as damage to the balls may result. Installing the rods. Raise the ram to allow enough room for the rods. Swing the nest plate away from the machine. Install the rods. Slide them through the final pushers and up to the rod lock plate. The rods also have a notch on the end of the rod. Generally, the notch will face the front of the plate, although your expander may vary slightly. Continue installing rods until you have completed your pattern. The number and position of the rod you install will depend on the whole pattern of the coil you plan to expand. Installing the strippers. Place the strippers into the stripper retainer hole. Pushing them in by hand is sufficient. 
Reposition the nest plate. Install the pin and the three bolts. Place the nest blocks into the holes in the nest plate. The number and pattern of these will be determined by the coil you will be expanding. Adjusting for a smaller coil. Before beginning, it may be necessary to remove one or more of the swing gates to allow proper clearance of the workhead. Failure to do so could cause damage to the swing gates. There are four corner bolts on each stop block. Loosen and then tighten with a little pressure for each of the eight bolts. It is necessary to snug each bolt after loosening to prevent the head from falling during setup. Be sure not to loosen the two center bolts on either stop block. They are spring loaded and are not to be loosened. Next, move the ram up so that there is clearance for the adjusting screws to move upward. Using the screw adjustment switch, push the switch handle up to move the screws up. Lower the ram. The stop locks will move down with the motion of the ram. Continue with the ram down until the distance from the top of the nest blocks to the bottom of the stripper is correct for your coil. This distance should be equal to the height of the expanded coil from end sheet to end sheet. Adjusting for a larger coil. Loosen the four corner bolts on each stop lock. Again, do not loosen the center bolts. Pull the pivot pin from both latches. These pins keep the latches from disengaging when the ram moves up. Therefore, moving the ram up with the pins removed will pull the stop locks with the workhead. Raise the ram up so that the workhead is above the finished coil length. Lower the ram with the ram down button until the distance from the top of the nest block to the bottom of the stripper is equal to the distance of the expanded coil from end sheet to end sheet. Tighten the stop blocks and reinstall the pins. Loosen the air cushion clamp. With the workhead resting on the stop block, lower the screws until they are approximately one inch above the air cushion clamp. Lower the ram until it bottoms out. Raise the screws until they touch the top of the ram and the drive clutch slips. Adjusting air cushions. Since a coil will shrink approximately 3% during the expansion process, an expanded coil of 100 inches will be approximately 97 inches when expanded. To achieve your desired coil length, it may be necessary to add or remove a few fins. For the air cushions to work, be sure you have air pressure connected to the expander. When the cycle begins, the air cushions are in their utmost position. They move the adjustment screws upward, which in turn holds the work head up. During the cycle, the weight of the head and plates will increasingly compress the air cushions. This should allow the strippers to stay slightly above the upper end sheet as the coil shrinks during expansion. To adjust the air cushions, it may be helpful to have one of the strippers removed. This will allow you to measure the stub length. Put an unexpanded coil into the gates. Lower the ram until the expander balls just starts through the upper end sheet. Measure the distance between the top of the tubing and the bottom of the stripper. This is your stub length. Adjust the cushions up or down so that the stub length is correct for your application. To move the air cushion locks, loosen the air cushion lock with the lever. Slide the cushion lock up or down. Tighten the lock with the lever. The purpose of the air cushions is to support the bulk of the weight of the workhead during the expansion cycle. This is necessary so that the strippers do not crush the coil. Adjusting gate side guides. Open all gates and loosen the side guide bolts. Slide the side guides toward the side of the gate. Insert an unexpanded coil into the gate. Lower the ram until the balls are slightly above the coil and position the coil to align with the tooling. Slide the side guides to hold the coil in place, tight enough to support the coil, but still allowing the coil to be removed and inserted easily. Maintenance. Hydraulic system. Components of the hydraulic system of interest to the user are the pressure gauge for the hydraulic system, the regenerative pressure switch, the hydraulic system filter, and the filter gauge. When the filter gauge needle enters the red area of the gauge, it is time to replace the filter. New filters can be ordered from Tridan Spare Parts Division. 
grease fittings. There are several grease fittings located throughout the machine. The frequency at which these are lubricated will be determined by your usage. It is recommended, however, that you use a good quality, high-pressure grease.